Hi, my name is John Gibbons, and today I'm going to talk to you about the brachial plexus. I want to show you basically on the skeleton, and then I want to demonstrate it using a, a whiteboard. So it's going to take me a few minutes, so please stay with me. Now, the brachial plexus, think of the words, the brachial plexus. The brachial is basically the arm, and the plexus is part of the nerve supply. So it's going to come from the level of C5, C6, C7, C8, and T1. And this model, you can see the brachial plexus on here, and it actually penetrates between the anterior fibers of the scalenes and the mid fibers of the scalenes in a space called the interscalene triangle. As it exits, it comes with a subclavian artery, and it comes over the first rib, and then it goes underneath the clavicle, underneath pectoralis minor, and off it goes. But what I want to do is demonstrate it using the whiteboard. Now, if we start off at C5, and I'm just basically going to draw C5, C6, C7, C8, and T1. So let's do that first. So if I do C5, and then we'll do C6, C7, C8, and T1. Now, these are actually the nerve roots, okay? Yeah, the actual vertebra is going to be adjacent to it. Okay, so these are the C5 to T1 nerve roots, and then that'll be part of a brachial plexus. So let's start off with the roots. Okay, so we'll do the roots, and it basically has one, two, three, four, five roots. Now, the C6 and C5 form together. Okay, so you've got the C5 and C6 nerve root. C7 continues as one. And then C8 and T1 is exactly the same as C5 and C6. And then these two come down together like this. Okay, so basically five now become three. And then this continues, okay, the same with this one and this one. And then this forms the trunks. Now, the trunks, if you think about this, okay, yeah, so we've got a, an upper trunk and a middle trunk and a lower trunk. So that's what we will call them. You can also call them the superior and inferior. It's probably easier to say, this is the upper, this is the middle, okay, and then this is the lower. So now five become three, and then from the trunks, they now split into what we call divisions. And we've got six divisions. Now let's focus on the upper one to start with. The upper one will split into an anterior and a posterior division. Okay, so the upper splits into an anterior and posterior. So does the middle. Okay, so the middle will split into an anterior and a posterior. And also the same for the lower. But what we'll do, we'll reverse this round a little bit just for a demonstration. So we'll say this is the posterior, and then this will be the anterior. Okay, so from five roots, it's continued to three trunks. From three trunks, it's continued to six divisions. Now, what we have to try to do is work out the next stage. Now, what we're going to do is, I will draw this in a different color. So what we're going to do is put the anterior one together, like this. Okay, in fact, we'll continue that one over there, like that. Okay, so you can see the anterior, the two anteriors come together over here. And let's do blue for that one. And also we're going to do the same with the posterior ones. So the posterior, in fact, we'll do, we'll come down a bit in this one. So we'll come down to there, and then we'll join this one up to there, and also we'll join this one up to there, and then let's continue with that one. Okay, so you can see that the two anterior divisions come together to form, well, we'll discuss it in a second, and then the three posterior divisions will meet, and then let's do that one in black, and then this anterior division continues on its own, to here. Now, 
So what we've got now, so you can see that verse 6 has basically become 3, and these are called chords. And then the three posterior divisions forms the posterior chord. I'll just do that. The upper trunk with the anterior of the middle will form the lateral. And then the bottom one is simply called the medial. So now we've got three chords. And what we're going to do now is continue that and add things to that. So with this one here, there is another branch that comes off like this, okay? So we've got some branches here. So we've got four branches so far. Even though there'll be five, but we'll discuss that as we go through. Now, with this case, the lateral branch comes to M, which is the musculocutaneous nerve. Okay, so we've got one branch called the muscular cutaneous nerve. The posterior splits into two and it forms the auxiliary, okay, but also forms the radial. So these are now branches, they're like a tree, okay. And this one, so the lower trunk, okay, which becomes the medial cord, now becomes the ulnar nerve. Okay, so we've got four branches. So we're missing one, and that is called the median nerve. Now, the median nerve basically will have a supply from the lateral cord and the medial cord. So this one will do it here. Yeah. So this one comes down, okay, and then forms part of the median nerve. But also, we have another branch comes there, which also forms the median nerve. So the median nerve, you can see, has part of a lateral cord, which comes from the C5 and the C6 and the C7. And then we've also got a medial cord, which is part of the C8 and T1. So the median nerve would basically come from C5 to T1. The ulnar nerve, you can see, but it only comes from the C8 and the T1. Okay, that. The radial nerve is a branch of basically all the roots, so that's C5 to T1. The auxiliary nerve, it's hard to follow this one, but basically it will be from C5 and C6, and the muscular cutaneous is also C5 and C6. So that's where they will come from. Now, what we need to do is just add in a few components in here, and we're going to start at the nerve root. But before we do that, there's a mnemonic we can remember for this, okay? We can use the R, the T, the D, the C, and the B. And then we can use a mnemonic called remember to drink cold beer. Okay? So I'll say that again. Remember to drink cold beer. And that's a way you can remember the divisions, if you like, well, not necessarily the divisions, but the way it splits from the roots to the trunks to the divisions to the cords and the branches. And you can also remember some in here. So we can use the M, the A, the R, the M, the U, and we can call that Ma Mu. Okay? So muscular cutaneous, the auxiliary, the radial, the median, and the ulna nerve. So you could use a mnemonic to remember the five branches and a mnemonic to remember the way the brachial plexus splits. Now, we also need to add in a few more components to this. And we'll start off at the nerve root. And there is a little nerve that comes off here. What color? I think I'll do this in red. Might make it easier. So there is a nerve root that comes off, C5. Okay. And then that one will actually be called the dorsal scapula nerve. So that's the dorsal scapular nerve here, and it basically supplies the muscles of the rhomboids and the levator scapulae, so it comes off in here. There is another one, and if I do this, so it comes down C5, there's a little branch coming off C6, and it comes down, 
and there's a branch off C7, okay, and it comes off. And then that is called the long thoracic nerve, and this one supplies the serratus anterior, okay? And so it comes from C5, C6, and C7, and then that muscle supplies the serratus, and if it is particularly weak, the muscle, or the nerve is damaged, then you can have something more like I've got called a winging scapula. Now, if we drift over a little bit, there is a branch coming off here, all right? And that is called the supra scapular nerve, and then that nerve supplies the supraspinatus and also the infraspinatus. There is another little branch coming off, coming here, okay, and that's basically to supply the subclavius muscle, which depresses the clavicle, and there's no set name, it's just called the nerve to the subclavius. Now, drifting over a little bit, we are going to look at the lateral cord, and over here we have a branch coming off. Okay, and that will be the lateral pectoral nerve. And you can probably guess by its name, pectoral, it supplies the pectoralis muscle, as in the pectoralis major. Yeah, on that side. So if you've got a lateral pectoral, then on this side, then we'll have a medial pectoral nerve. Now the medial pectoral nerve supplies the pectoralis major, but also supplies the pectoralis minor. Yeah, along here. Now, on the posterior cord, then we've actually got three branches that come off this. So we've got one branch here, okay. Maybe let's do that one first. This is called the upper subscapular nerve. And then we've also got one called the lower subscapular nerve from there. Okay, you can probably guess what these ones supply. So the upper subscapular supplies the subscapularis. And the lower subscapula also supplies the subscapularis, but also supplies the teres major. And also there's one, and that we'll call that one the, the foraco dorsal nerve. And then that one supplies the latissimus dorsi muscle. Now we're almost there. On the lower part, where we've got the medial pectoral nerve, there's another two branches, and these are what we call cutaneous nerves. So we have the medial brachial cutaneous, and we've also got another branch called the medial antibrachial cutaneous nerve. And if you think of those words, cutaneous, they're basically sensory nerves. And the medial brachial will mainly supply this part of the arm, along here, like the brachial part, the posterior part here. And the medial anti-brachial will supply more the mid part and down into the forearm. Now, I will, in another video, cover the muscles and the cutaneous supply for the five branches, but there's not exactly much room left on here, so we'll do that one for another one. So let's just do a little recap. Yeah, so let's just do a little recap on here. So we've got the brachial plexus that comes from the level of C5 to T1, and we have five nerve roots. The five nerve roots then split to become the upper, the middle, and the lower trunk. And then each trunk splits into two separate divisions, and both have an anterior and a posterior. Okay, so we've got six divisions. And then the two anterior divisions here, yeah, of the upper and middle, form the lateral cord which then becomes the muscular cutaneous nerve. And there's a branch off called the lateral pectoral nerve. The posterior three divisions here, okay, posterior the three, they form the posterior cord, which then branches to the auxiliary and then the radial nerve. And you can see that our three individual, excuse me for that. Uh, we've got three individual nerve roots. So we've got the upper and lower subscapula. 
and then also we got the, the thoraco dorsal. And the last one, where the lower trunk forms the anterior division, it simply continues to form the ulnar nerve, which is mainly the C8 and T1, but as part of that, it splits into the medial pectoral nerve for the pec major and the pec minor, and also we got two sensory divisions as part of it. Remember the mnemonic, remember to drink cold beer, and we can also use the mnemonic MAMU to remember the branches. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you have any questions, make some comment and I can reply to that. Please subscribe to my channel and then maybe have a look at the next one on the brachial plexus for the, the branches. Thank you for watching.